Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, saying, Who is left among you who saw this temple in its former glory? And how do you see it now? In comparison, in comparison with it, is this not in your eyes as nothing? Yet now be strong, Zerubbabel, says the Lord, and be strong, Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and be strong, all you people of the land, says the Lord, and work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. According to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains among you. Among you. Do not fear. Verse 6. For thus says the Lord of hosts, once more, it is a little while, I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and dry land, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations. And I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. The Lord bless the reading of his word.
Come on, raise your voice, say, I leave the earth. I leave the earth to worship you. I leave the earth. I leave the earth to worship. To worship. Say, I leave my world to worship you. I leave the earth. I leave my world.
me hear you. Pastor Barnabas Jacob. I want us to welcome the servant of God. I'm, I'm sure that we know the servant heart of Pastor Jacob. We receive the word of God through Pastor Jacob. Please let your heart be open. Open your heart, open your ears, 
and then you will know that the Lord is here. That no blade of grass will miss the dew of the Lord as the word of the Lord comes forth from his servant in the name of Jesus. honor tonight. He is the beginning and he is the end. He is the first and yet he is the last. He is the alpha and yet he is still the omega. Can we bless him, bless him this evening? Can we give him the glory due his majesty? It is to him that we are gathered this, this evening. It is to him. It is to him we are gathered. We give him all the glory. We give him all the honor. All the he is the light of the world. 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 We bless him tonight. We honor him. We hallow his name. We acknowledge him the bread of life. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, you are the light of the world. More than all this you are. Blessed be your name. We receive your help tonight. And we thank you because you are building your house. And every day you are making it better. Every day you are making your house better. You are making your house better. You are making your house better. You are adding to the house that you are building. You are adding light. You are adding color. You are adding beauty. You are adding value. You are a master at addition. We bless you tonight. Hallelujah. You may please have your seat if you can. Oh, can we thank God enough for, for his visitation already? For visiting us this mightily. I say, can we thank God enough? I say he has visited us mightily. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We thank God for the shaking. Hallelujah. He's shaking the heavens. He's shaking the earth. He's shaking the sea. He's shaking the dry land. He's shaking all nations. And he's even shaking me and you. That's why you are not comfortable. That's why I'm not comfortable. He's walking the shaking so that those things that cannot remain must go. Hallelujah. We need the shaking. Hallelujah. We need the shaking. Because anything he has not planted, he is uprooting. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome to Fire Conference. I say welcome to Fire Conference. A Bruce Reed he will not break. A smoldering flask he will not quench. He has been fanning that little ember. He has been fanning that little coal. It has been growing. I say it has been growing. The fire has been growing. The momentum has been building. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will not stop until it becomes a raging inferno. Has fire ever chased you before? Where it will roar at you. Hallelujah. That fire, you don't use water to quench it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are that un unquenchable fire. The fire is burning. No wonder the disciples on their way to Emmaus acknowledge when he was speaking to us, didn't our heart burn? Their heart was not just burning fire. It was him, the bread of life. It was him, the light of the world. I say it was him, the Alpha and Omega. He was actually engraving, doing the work of an engraver, engraving his word on the tablets of their heart. He was writing it in there so they can't miss it. 
He's writing it in there so when he leaves, his word will be alive in them. Say, didn't our hearts burn? Didn't our heart burn? And while the heart was burning, it was chaff that was being consumed. What right do I have to disbelieve God? What right do I have to doubt him? Every day, he keeps bringing his word. He keeps casting word. He is that, that sower that has his back full of seeds. And every day, he's casting his seeds. He casts his seeds. He doesn't mind the quantity because he's looking for a great, um, a massive harvest. Why do I have to doubt him? Why should we doubt him? What has he done wrong? We don't doubt Satan, but we find ourselves doubting him. You are sitting on a chair. I don't know if you tested the chair. Someone came, rode on a keke this evening. Did you check the engine to find out that the engine was okay? Did you check the tires to confirm if they've been well tightened before you will sit there? Have you even confirmed, have you carried out a test on the person driving the keke to confirm that he was not drunk? Are you sure he was, he's not, he's, it was not a drug addict that took you this, this evening and brought you to church? Yet you relaxed here. You have entered the house of God. I welcome you to the house of bread. Welcome to the house of bread. There's enough bread. Jacob, why are you doubting him? What has he not done? The sun does not rise every day because of him. The sun rises for you. The sun is not setting because of him. The sun is setting because of you. Why are you doubting him? What has he done wrong? Are we no, am I not supposed to grow in faith? Why am I doubting him? I've become so familiar with nature. We're in dry season. But step out and see the flowers. They are beckoning on us, welcoming us. If he so values the flower to clothe them and make them beautiful, your class, your level is not with the plant flowers. No. One flower you carry, what you see is a shade of blue. What you don't see is many kinds of shades of blue. He's the one that puts them there. You are of more value, you are of more value than the flowers out there. He cherishes you. He values you. He helps you in high esteem. It is not by mistake that God used our pastor to put it in a song. You are the dream that he bears around trying to tell Satan, can't you see Pastor Larry? There's nothing you can do about her. He says you are the star in his sky. Beyond this sky, there's another sky. You are a star in that sky. Concerning you, he didn't write your name, Jacob, J-A-C-O-B. He, your entire image both the, the ones that are intricate, both the ones that are visible. It is your image. When he look at his palm, he sees all of you. What is me that you are mindful of me? What is the son of man that you have chosen to visit? See how he visited us. Just two songs. Two songs. See how he came. Like the mighty rushing wind. See the surge of his spirit. Why do we have to doubt him? Why? The entire, the entire pursuit of the fallen man is the social media. And there's nothing to offer. Yet we are there. We are heartbroken. We are there. We are confused. We are there. Our feet stolen from the house of God. We are there. We are not comforted. We are there. What has he done wrong? See his word. It has not changed. See his word has not changed. It's the same word. I say his word has not changed. I say his word has not changed. I say his word has not changed. His testimony has not changed. He carries a testimony. Even before he was physically manifested as Jesus, we carry, we have the testimony of his journey with his people. For 40 years, he fed them. They carried what he fed them with. They looked at it. They didn't understand what he meant. They said, what is this? It became the name. He permitted them like, like Adam to name what he provided for them. He didn't give them a name. They say, what is this? He said, what is this? But as they ate it, the transformation began. As they ate it, it began to transform their body. Not only their physical body, even their clothes were affected. Why? He is the God of all flesh. There is nothing too hard for him to do. The bread of life is in the house. His storehouse is loaded. He's not going to give you Pastor Fashi's bread. Neither is he going to give you Pastor Jacob's bread. He has bread that is meant for you with your name tag on it. Bread that is suitable to you. He is in the house. I say he is in the house. I say he is in the house. I say he is in the house. Can we thank God enough for him? Can we thank God enough for him? 
Hallelujah. Can we thank God enough for him? Hallelujah. 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 We saw him in Genesis, in Revelation. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. Then Revelation 1, 17 and 18. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I dare say to someone tonight, Don't be afraid. Jesus is the first. And he is the in-between. And he is the last. Hallelujah. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. He cannot die again. It's too late. He acknowledges, I'm the one who lives. He now said, who was dead? The dead aspect, aspect is he was. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And because he lives, because he lives, what happens to me and you? I live, so I'm alive. A living dog is better than a dead lion. Hallelujah. I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Hallelujah. As the Father spoke to us concerning him as Jesus, the light of the world. And John chapter 8 verse 12 says, Then Jesus spoke to them again saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And the songwriter puts it so well. Those who walk on in the light will never stumble nor fall. Those who walk on in the light will neither fear to fall. We have followed him here. So we have to put fear in its place under our feet. Hallelujah. 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 One of the great words that stuck with me is with light comes boldness. Now that the light is come, now I have received Jesus, the light of the world. Something should happen to me. I lose the old nature. I lose the old man. Then boldness rises. Not my boldness. The boldness rises from his spirit that is within me. I never knew it existed until I collided, until I encountered Jesus, the light of the world. Boldness to do what? Boldness to arise. Shining becomes automatic. Boldness to do what? Boldness to build with him. Why? He is building. Anyone that stands against him to scatter what he's building, set themselves up to be crushed. He is the chief cornerstone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Boldness to do what? Boldness to walk miracle. Because these are the days of Jesus. I said these are the days of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's looking for vessels of light to use. Boldness to do what? To avail yourself so he can use you. Boldness to ask God for the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Boldness to receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you. The Holy Spirit doesn't come upon us so we speak with tongues. The Holy Spirit come upon us first so we receive power. We receive power. Power to be a husband. Power to be a wife. Power to be a child in your father's house. Power to be a daughter. Power to be a son. We receive power to be children of God. We receive power to be the people of God. The most important people in the earth. Power to represent him. Power to be witnesses. Power to love God. Power to stand. Power to put on the whole armor of God. Power to put on the helmet of salvation. Power to put on the breastplate of righteousness. Power to put on your waist the belt of truth. Power to shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Power to carry the shield of faith. When the Satan throws his arrow, you arrows you bring them down. Power to carry the sword of the spirit with which you will wield the war of faith. Power. I say power. Holy Ghost is come for us to receive power. From that place, we, 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 the spirit of the worshiper is activated. Thanksgiving. 
begins to flow without stress. Power to endure the presence of God. Power to sit where the bread of life is dishing out life. Power to hear and to intercept the mind of the spirit. Power to shut down the voice of Satan. Shut down the voice of hell. Shut down the voice of the flesh. Shut down the voice of voices of carnality. Power to believe. This is the work of God. Believe in Jesus and the one whom he had sent. So by the power of the spirit, we believe. He said, this is the work of God. The work of God is not to sweep the church first. The work of God is not to stand by the camera first. The work of God is not to join, to join the worship team. The work of God is to believe. When you have believed, then you go on working, knowing whoever comes to God must first believe that he is, he is, he is, he is, more than all this, he is. More than what his hands can provide, he is. More than the natural, the visible, the physical, he is. It's a lie that nothing is happening. It's a lie. It's a lie. Chains are breaking. It's a lie. Darkness is dispelled. There is that day will never surface. That day will never come. Where light will cease to be governor over darkness. Any day. Light is governor. There has never been an argument between light and darkness. When light shows up, darkness knows its level. Even the Lord himself put darkness in his place. He called darkness night. When we see you, we are not afraid of you. It's to, it's to tell men like me who love running helter-skelter, it's time to rest. So he gave darkness walk. So that men who do the rat race will be able to sleep. And then animals will go out in the night. And even the darkness, he gave her a governor. He created two great lights. One to rule the day, the sun. The other moon to rule the night with its darkness. So in the night, 12, 12, zero, zero. Why? If you step out of your house, everywhere is the darkest. But we say to each other, good morning. And it doesn't look like it. That is your story. Out of the ashes of your dying. Out of the ashes of your dying. Out of the ashes of your dying. Your eyes, my eyes are open. See the breaking forth. See the shattering. See God uprooting every hindrance. Because this is the day of your show. This is the day of your manifestation. See the breaking forth of a brand new day. Brand new day. In which one name, the name of the Lord. I said the name of the Lord. I said not a politician, the name of the Lord. Not your uncle that is a senator, the name of the Lord. I said the name of the Lord. I said the name of the Lord. I said the name of the Lord. Alone. His name alone is being glorified. His name alone. Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. God. Pastor Fash told us that your path has been lit already. Because his word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. It's lit already. You followed it, you came to his house. He's adding. I say he's adding. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. A little here, a little there. It doesn't look like it. It's a lie. Satan is losing its grip on us. Why? Because we are dwelling in the house of the Lord. In his presence. I say in his presence. I say in his presence. I say in his presence. So I introduced to us tonight Jesus, the bread of life. He's the true source of our life. Spirit, soul, and body. Some limit him to spiritual life. So who is in charge of the physical? What we see physical all came from the invisible where the natural eyes cannot see. He is in charge of the physical. He's still giving new eyes. Don't be deceived tonight. He still gives new kidneys. Don't be deceived tonight. He still gives new limbs. Don't be deceived tonight. He still gives, he, he still liberates men from, from, from dumpness. He takes away. He's still, he's still in the business of loosening the strings of our tongue so we can shout his praise. 
so we can declare his praise so we can announce his praise he's still in that business I say he's still in that business he's the Jesus is the bread of life <laughs> he, he's the one that sustains our provision I went somewhere and they're asking me savings savings I might sound foolish but don't worry they asked me, savings or current? I said, I don't have savings. I have two current, only two current. I said, I don't know the difference. But if you have been saving, this dollar matter, you have lost. But there is a bank I know. A bank. Operates like a basket. Everything you put there, you lose nothing. Kept by the power of God. He's Jesus. Hallelujah. Men can say anything they want to say. When we give to him, you cannot encounter the bre bread of life. And he open your eyes. He gives you life. Open your eyes. Helps you to know that he doesn't just give you life. He makes you a life giver. And then we have anything we give him, we say it's too much, it's a lie. It's a lie. Our giving life is our sacred life. Our giving life is our holy life. It's the things that we cherish. We don't talk about our giving life in public. But we give him. And we want to give, give, give. Until we give like him on the cross. His hands are still spread open. Waiting for whoever. Whoever and all. Who will come. Shall come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, the bread of life. He represents that which never perishes. Hallelujah. Has bread ever spoiled in your house? I prepared solid tea the other day. Solid tea. And I took the tea, kept the tea, and I asked my brother in the house, please help me get that bread that I kept in the cupboard. And he opened it and brought it and it spoiled. I couldn't believe it. And the place to get another bread was far. Right within me, I was discouraged. My spirit went down. See the tea. Hot. But the bread spoiled. Jesus is not that kind of bread. He never perishes. He never spoils. His supply will never run out. I say, will never run out. Oh, Labrando Galabadaya. Jeke Pokoto Gudubaludaya. We are not talking dead bread. We are talking Jesus, the bread of life. The bread has life in it. The bread gives life. Hallelujah. 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 So, who lied to us that we're wasting our time in his presence? We are feeding on him the bread of life. Hallelujah. I say we are feeding on him the bread of life. We read, we read John, John chapter 6 a couple of times. We've been reading it. Therein we see a people who are concerned about getting daily needs. With this economic circumstance, we are in even as a nation. Nobody here who doesn't want another person to take care of their daily bills. So they came to Jesus. Because there was a miracle the other day. And everybody had bread. There were over 15,000. And he took care of all of them. Even his ATM card was not used. They wanted to swipe the card. They said there was no need. Why? Because a young child fed on the bread of life until he lost his appetite for physical natural bread and fish and when there was need adults couldn't make the provision that would be the occasion for the miracle his parents they had eaten their portion that was his portion five loaves and two fishes small fishes but he encountered Jesus the bread of life and hunger for natural food Rather, 
he was willing to give it. He didn't test it. He didn't ask them, please, if I'm the one, I will take my portion and give them the remainder. He gave it the way it is. He encountered Jesus, the bread of life. So giving was easy. Hallelujah. Jesus is committed to the hunger of the soul. To the yearning, longing, thirst of your spirit man. Does he provide bread? Yes. I want you to know by Jesus the bread of life he becomes your mainstay and my mainstay both spiritually physically, naturally and otherwise hallelujah is it possible to depend on God yes and he wants us to absolutely depend on him where you get to the point where you need a sachet of pure water you depend on him and then someone who will show up will show up with the right temperature that you need you want it ice they bring it ice actually they were led by the same spirit of jesus the bread of life so they bought two jesus had you in mind they didn't know why they bought the second one but because we walk by faith and not by when they meet you they know it's for you the spirit bears witness with my spirit that I am a child of God. Why? Because my sheep hear my voice. They know me. They hear the voice of the stranger. They don't follow. My voice they follow. They shut down the voice of the stranger. Hallelujah. 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 So he wants me and you to put our trust in him. And the bread he gives cannot spoil. Hallelujah. And his life can never end. Life without end. I say life without end. Even when you hear that I have passed on, it's actually passing on. This carcass, this trampoline, this tent will fall off. But that life does not have an end. That's why for us, we have been taught when we go for burials, we know. We have gone to bury the remain of Jacob, Barnabas' father. Is the remain. What is the remaining? The actual substance has left the body. The former occupant has left. But on that day of resurrection, the spirit will return the body, everything. The mortal will put on immortality. Hallelujah. 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 We are talking about him. The bread of life. And it is not out of place to see his journey just a little bit in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you to know what was in your heart, whether you will keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. So we are talking bread, not physical bread. We are talking every word that proceeds from his mouth. So verse 4 says, Your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. Abba. Size 28. And my age, 15. Then I turned 28 years old. And I'm still wearing the same size. No swelling. Jesus. I turned 40. It's the same shoe. And the shoe not worn out. No, 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 no. They didn't, they desired garlic, leeks, and onion, but they didn't say they want to change shoe. When it's worn out, you want to change it. Every day. Oh, lo balotaya. Hey. Polish, shiny, looking more valuable. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No wonder when Jesus was tempted in Matthew chapter 4. I read verse 2. And when he had fasted 40 days, 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the son of God, command the stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. No pride. He took it from Deuteronomy. So why should me and you be proud? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why should we be proud? If Jesus humbled himself, he too was challenged. He too was going through. He too was hungry. So he didn't turn the stones according to the desire of Satan to become bread so that he had fasted 40 days, 40 nights. He has a right now to eat. So Satan wanted him to turn the stones. So when he didn't turn the stones, he ate the word of God. I say he ate the word of God. I say he ate the word of God. How do we know? He went into the wilderness full of the spirit. He ate the word of God and returned in the power of the spirit. You have been eating the word of God. You will be moving in the power of the spirit. I say in the power of the spirit. Hallelujah. No wonder he will say to us, in John chapter 4, verse 34, Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Hallelujah. So when we obey God's word and live by his word, we feed on the bread of life. Hallelujah. God is faithful to sustain those who are devoted to him. He is faithful. I say he is faithful. Are you devoted to him? Physically, does he take care of your needs? Paul said, I've learned to abase. That's not all. I've learned to abound. So when I have more than what I need, his wisdom directs my heart on what to do. And I refuse to be puffed up. And I don't set my heart on the increase. When I have just enough, I know how to go by it. Then he summed up in summary with my journey. He got to a point in his journey. He said, I can do all. He didn't begin by, I can do all things. Started from the place of lack. Started from the place like Israel. When they didn't have, they, were, they, they didn't know he had a plan to take care of them. So when manna will come, he didn't ask them to do a cue. If it is the Lord, he knows how to give you your portion and your lot. He didn't ask them to queue up in the wilderness. When manna is coming, it's like rain. And he brings more than what they need. And he warns them, don't take beyond what you need. Oh. Don't allow greed. Then some said, no, ah, this is economic situation. Uh -uh. This is palliative from heaven. Then they took more than what they needed. Then when they took it home, after 24 hours, by the clock of heaven, it will begin to stink. So when they see you washing your house, they know that's a greedy man. Jacob Barnabas, greedy man. In the wash house, he took more than his fair share. Because your house will be stinking. And one of the places me and you don't want is a place where you have just enough for the day. I know that place. Some of us, we draw a line on our bank account. Once you reach here, you can even, you first tell yourself, this is my zero. And your zero is 20 million. What, who are you? What do you mean? Somebody said, this is my zero. What are we talking about? 100K. You know what 100K is? Somebody said, this is my zero. It's 5K. So you come to church, I don't read zero. God, you know now, I don't read zero. No offering for you. I say he's the bread of life. He's the owner of the storehouse. This journey is by faith. I was telling us, what right do you have, do you have to doubt him? When, when, when has he ever left you without taking care of you? When? When have you ever been stranded and he didn't show up? 
Not that whether you prayed or no, no, no. I mean, when you are in your weakest, when you know that you are the rib, you are the number one rebel concerning the kingdom, he still showed up for you. Even our children have stories. I was dying somewhere in, in Plateau State then. And I was having fever. No food to eat. Heaven compelled on a Muslim lady and she gave her two own rice with soup. To be fed this boy. Where are his parents? They say he's a student from that boarding school. I can't forget it. I was not born again. I don't attend fellowships. But he knew there will be a day like this. We will talk about the bread of life. He provided. He provided through a raven, stingy bird, breakfast, lunch, dinner to his servant. How did he carry it? The size that will feed the prophet. Have you ever imagined it? And he was by the brook of water, flowing river, fresh water. So you just eat and drink water. Immediately it sees he provided a widow. He didn't provide a woman with a husband and children with a thriving business. He provided somebody struggling. She was a widow that everybody should pity. But God didn't pity her because he is her source. Hallelujah. 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 Mm. David left us this testimony. I have been young. Now I am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken. Nor his descendants begging bread. I have read it all. I have begged bread. Begged bread. Bread represents all kinds of things. I beg bread. I was going to secondary school the other day. I looked at my cousin who came to the house. I looked at his clothes. I said, no, 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 I want this shirt. It's packet shirt. You know packet shirt, not this one they are selling today. They tell you talking. Packet shirts. <laughs> it's a packet shirt. I stole it. My brother, I didn't ask him. I stole. It was when I got to school and it was dirty. I realized how worn out it was. But I stole it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Begging bread. As if the Lord does not make provision. Amen. He makes provision. Amen. David said, I have been young. Now I am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken. Nor his descendants begging bread. David was too much. At some point, even the bread in the house of the Lord was the one that David was interested in. I love David. Hallelujah. And he ate it and he didn't die. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Mm. John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Um, mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. He's the bread of life. He's the bread of life. Mm. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, put it.
Okay, leave, leave it, leave it, leave it. No, leave it, leave it. Just leave it. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. I love Jesus. I said I love Jesus. He doesn't discriminate. He knows the hunger of children. So in Matthew chapter 19 verse 13. Then little children were brought to him that he might put his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed from there. Hallelujah. He didn't stop them. He knew they carried the future. He, he laid his hands on them in preparing them for what lies ahead. If it is Jesus, there is no discrimination and there is no partiality. The disciples didn't understand. So they were stopping the children. But he said, let the little children come to me. Why? Because children too have a right to hunger and thirst for righteousness. Children too have a right to know that only Jesus can satisfy their hunger. Only Jesus can quench the thirst of their soul. Only Jesus. No cartoon. It has not yet been created that will satisfy the soul of a child. It's a lie. No magazine. No Lego building block. No, it has not been invented. Only Jesus. I say only Jesus can quench the thirst in the child, in the soul of a child. Only Jesus can satisfy the hunger in the heart of a child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People encountered this bread. Oh. Matthew 26. Verse 6. And when Jesus was in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him having an alabaster flask of very costly fragrant oil, and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. But when his disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, why this waste? For this fragrant oil might have been sold for, so, for much and given to the poor. But when Jesus was aware of it, he said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always. But me you do not have always. For in pouring this fragrant oil on my body, she did it for my burial. As shortly I say to you, Wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a, as a memorial to her. Why did she pour the oil? She has encountered the bread. The box, alabaster box, was her life saving. But she had just encountered the bread of life. And nothing, everything loses its worth and price and value. He became suddenly the most important in her life. It's like, you do something for me, I don't know how to pay back. But I said, please, permit me to say thank you. That was what she did. The cost of the alabaster box cannot be equated with the price of the life she received from the bread. This bread will make you rich financially it will make you rich the word for us as a house has gone forth when riches increase don't put your heart on it with the increase you will come you will lie down in his presence as if nothing they sobbed with the riches you are able to support his work without making noise i mean she brought it 
She encountered the bread of life. This is her response. Did Jesus tell me and you the price of what she received? Her entire alabaster box was 50 billion. But what he gave her was the price tag of the life of the bread that she received. She was, she was in appreciation. She was in thanksgiving. So you cannot meet me and tell me, I love the way you love God. No, no, no. I'm still saying thank you to the bread of life I have received of him. My entire life is thank you. Does that mean I don't have needs? No. He's the bread of life. I say he's the bread of life. I say he's the bread of life. He has just terminated the reign of her hunger, her desire for sex. All kinds of lust. Bam! Has been swallowed up. She has found a new Messiah, a new lover. And he's the bread of life. And for her, there's nothing too much. People will stand and say, what I have done for God. You've not done anything for God. How much of his bread have you eaten? And clean mouth. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Um, John chapter 8 verse 3 oh that thanksgiving will be activated in our hearts as we acknowledge the impact of the bread of life in our lives then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery and when they had set her in the midst they said to him teacher this woman was caught in adultery in the very act where is the man? Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to cause to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, he who is without sin among you, let him draw a stone at her first. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus has raised himself up and saw no one, but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. This was her bread of life, his salvation. Instead of them to repent, they met Jesus. They came testing him. They met a rock that could not bend to their wishes and caprices. They left. Instead of them to say, bread of life, help me. No. They left. They were not willing. They were not ready. He told her, am I accusing you? No. He's here with your bread. He's not here to accuse you. He's not here to accuse me. Hallelujah. 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 And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. He just gave her life. You are not condemned. He just declared her forgiven. He just declared her free. He just declared her blameless. He gave her the commission. Go, but don't sin. Why? You have collided with the bread of life. Hallelujah. Then Jesus spoke to them again saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. He is the one we are following. And we will not grope in the dark. Hallelujah. 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 One thing is needful. 
and the most important, to feed on Jesus, the bread of life. Luke chapter 10, verse 38. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house and she had a, and she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' Jesus feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. Tell yourself, one thing is needed. And Mary, Jacob, has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from me. She sat. Listen. One thing is needful. No, no, no. Sorry. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. She sat there feeding on the bread of life. Every time we gather, Satan says nothing is happening. The word of God is working. Habits are falling off. Lives transformed. Chains broken. Yokes destroyed. Liberty established. Eyes enlightened. Feet. Feet ordered by his word. Hands trained to war. Fingers to battle. Faces set as a flint, even the hardest of all rocks, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Just as we have sat, she sat at his feet, feeding on the bread of life. Feeding on the bread of life. Hallelujah. 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 One thing is needful to feed on him. Hallelujah. Feed on him. He repeated three times. You that eat his flesh, drink his blood. He will raise you on the last day. So mean your life is not finished. After cessation of life. Hallelujah. 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 Like matter. This is the order. This is the command that is given us. Colossians puts it this way. Colossians 3.16 Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in that bread is the wisdom of God. The teachings of God. The ways of God. Then we are able to admonish one another from there. Then Psalms will flow naturally. Then hymns. Then spiritual songs. Then singing in the heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We receive the grace and the power. To let the word of God dwell in us richly as we feed on Jesus the bread of life. See, he knows the challenges that teenagers go through. Feed on him. You will never be a victim as a teenager. He knows the challenges that young adults go through. He doesn't want your heart to be broken to pieces. So he has the bread for you. That will equip you. That will empower you. To be able to stand. When temptation comes. He will open your eyes. You will see the way of escape. You will see the window of escape. That he has provided. He provides the bread of life to the husband. 
who want to lead about his wife. He provides the bread of life to the wife who is able to submit to her husband, who has a responsibility to love his wife until we feed on him. Husbands cannot love their wives until we feed on the bread of life. Wives cannot submit to their husbands. How is submission possible? Children, obey your parents. Eat the bread of life. He himself was a child in his daddy's house. No report was taken to the city council, city square, concerning him. His uncles were not gathered to discipline the most stubborn child. Why? Because he too ate the bread of life. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Hallelujah. We cannot operate as pastors. We must eat the bread of life. He is the chief shepherd. He is the good shepherd. He is the great shepherd. So as we eat the bread of life, the work becomes easy. For my burden is light and my yoke is easy. Every time we complain, check the burden. It's not his burden. Every time it's too heavy, it's not him. You have added your own on top. We will climax here as we see Peter. Hallelujah. Jesus is redeemed. Okay. Acts chapter 2. I read from verse 14. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea, and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and heed my words. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. When you eat the bread of life, you are able to make the distinction between that which is God and that which is not God. Between that which is holy and between that which is profane. Between that which is righteous and that which is unrighteous. When you eat the bread of life, when you encounter the bread of life, now he has eaten enough. Now he has obeyed by tarrying with the 500. 380 were tired. They left. The remaining 120 received the visitation. Now out of the abundance of the bread in the heart, the mouth is speaking. It is done. Scriptures lined up. Two groups of people. One said, wow, they are speaking in our mother tongues. In the nations we came from on this mission to, carry, to participate in this feast. I said, we hear them. We were so attentive that we heard them. And when we heard them speaking, they were glorifying God, giving God the glory. Shouting glory! And then the other group were speaking in a different language. They were mockers and scoffers. They said, these people are drunk. And we know what they are drunk with. They are drunk with new wine. But Peter stood up and said, this is that. You're speaking from where? The bread of life. He said, this is that. Joel, Joel immediately came to play. He said, they are not drunk with wine, as you suppose. Since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men, men servants, on, on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, 
and signs which God did through him in your midst, as you yourself also know. Him being delivered by the determined purpose and for knowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands and have crucified and put to death. Whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it has not, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. For David said concerning him, says concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in Hades, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of joy in your presence. Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he will raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. He foreseeing this spoke concerning the resurrection of the Christ, that his soul was not left in Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus, this Jesus, I said this Jesus, I said this Jesus. God raised up, of which we all we are all witnesses. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, He poured out this which you now see and hear. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he says himself, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus. I said, this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. I say, he's the bread of life, yet he's both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were caught to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. I made us read all this. When you encounter the bread of life, you will stand like Peter and represent Jesus. That is what it is all about. Well, why? Why is he the bread of life? So that to whoever believes in him, out of their belly will flow rivers of living water. Peter didn't stop speaking. He kept speaking about Jesus until they said, what must we do? Now what must we do signifies their need of the bread of life you are a believer you need him you are an unbeliever you need him you are a growing believer you need him you are a backsliding believer you need him you are a child in the house of god you need him you are a baby in the lord you need him. You can never get to any point in your life where you don't need him. You need him. You want to marry, you need him. You are married, you need him. Hallelujah. You are a widow, you need him. You are a widower, you need him. You are a businessman, you need him. A businesswoman, you need him. You are a student, you need him. You are a civil servant, you need him. You are in the academia, you need him. You are a medical doctor, you engage patients every day, you need him. You are a neurosurgeon, you carry out uh, operations in the brain. You yourself and your brain, you need him. There is no satisfaction without him. Sex can never give you satisfaction. You need him. In the life of every soul is a vacuum. Only the bread of life can occupy. 
He's the only one that can fill up that vacuum, that massive hole in your soul. He's the only one. You need him, rise on your feet tonight. He's the bread of life. He's the bread of life. He's the bread of life. I say he's Jesus, the bread of life. I say he's Jesus, the bread of life. Oh, tonight is a good night. You need him to step out without shame. I need you where I day. I need you. Tonight is a great night for children to step out and come and say, Jesus, you are the one I need. I need you. I need you. I need you. There's no hiding. There's no pretending. There's no macho. I need Jesus, the bread of life. I need you, Jesus. Rendekente, Pokonto Sante, Shandra Basundra Santa Kente, Rendekente, Kunto Handra the Rade, I need you, I need you, I need you, Rendekente, Pokonto Sante, I need you, Shantarondo Handra the Rade, I need you, Pokonto Sante, Rendekente, Shandra the Rade, I need you, Jesus, Rendekente, Kunto Handra the Rade, I need you, Lord. Pocunto Sante, Shantorondo Handra the Redain the Reda. All I am is yours. I need you. I need you. All I have is yours. I need you, Jesus. Horendo Kenta Conto Handra the Reda. Pocunto Sante, Shandrabas on the Rebel Sante. I need you, Jesus. I need you. I need you. I need you. As a newborn babe, I need you. I desire your word as a sincere milk. I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you, Jesus. I need you. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Rendekenta conto hundred of the day. Pocunto sante. Shandaraba sundarabo sante. You are the bread of life. Life. I need you, Jesus. Horendo Kenta Conto Hundred of the Day, Conto Santa Kente, Pon Conto Sante. I hunger and I thirst for righteousness. I need you, Jesus. Rena Kente, Pon Conto Sante, Shantorondo Hundred of the Day in the Rada. I behold and I keep beholding your word till I become just like you, Jesus. So I need you, Jesus. I need you. I need you. I need you. Horenda Kenta Conto Hundred of the Day. I need you, Lord. Pon Conto Santa Kente, Shantorondo Hundred of the Day in the Rada, Conto Sante, Rena Kente. I need you, Jesus. I need you till I become bread for my generation. Till my life becomes bread. I need you, Jesus. I need you till my life becomes bread. Shandra the Reda, the Reda, Rena Kenta Conto Hundred of the Day, Pocunto Sante, Shandra Basundra Bosante, Horenda Kenta Conto Hundred of the Reda. I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you till I become just like you. Rena Kente, Pocunto Sante, Horenda Kenta Conto Hundred of the Reda, and I keep becoming, I keep becoming, Horenda Kenta Conto Hundred of the Reda, Shandra Basundra Bosante. Sante, Renda Kente, Pon Conto Sante, Renda Kenta Conto Hundred of the Day, because you keep adding to me, you keep adding to me, you keep adding to me, Shantorondo Hundred of the Day, Conto Santa Kente, Pon Conto Sante, Renda Kente, Shandra the Reda the Reda, oh, I need you, I need you, I need you, Jesus, I need you, the bread of life, Renda Kenta Conto Hundred of the Day, I desire you, oh. Only Jesus, only 
only you, only you. Renda kente, hongkonto sante. Renda kente, hongkonto handere dere. Shandere ba sondere bo sante. Hongkonto sante kente. I'm not holding back. 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 I give you all of me. I give you all of me, Jesus. All of me. All of me. I'm not holding back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please let's stretch for our hands and pray for Pastor Jacob. Even as virtue has come out of